You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. House lights are on, cell phone lights are on for the Minji's Maniacs. Here in Greenville, North Carolina, ECU hosts a top five opponent for the first time in over a decade as Wichita State comes to town. With Chris Patola, I'm Kevin Brown. And we are looking at one of the new kids in terms of conference realignment this year. Wichita State in its first season in the American. One of two unbeaten teams left, and no surprise, the Shockers and the Cincinnati Bearcats. Picked to be the top two of the conference atop the American right now. Wichita State has done it in its first three games, Chris, in conference play with an outstanding offensive display. Yeah, they are one of the best offenses in the country. And look, any good offense starts with having good talent. And Wichita State has it in bulk. You see the points per game. They do it largely on the backs of a great perimeter shooting team. And it starts with the point of attack in Landry Shamit. This guy plays with a calm, he plays with a purpose, has good size, and he plays with a precision. He is an outstanding talent at that point guard position, will eventually make money in the NBA playing that position. What a lead guy to corral all this talent for Wichita State. The numbers for Shamit are terrific, and he does that in under 30 minutes per game. He was the only American Conference player named today to the Wooden Award midseason top 25. Wichita State winners of five in a row coming into tonight's game. The first meeting ever between these two teams with Wichita and ECU. Conference rivals for the first time, the Pirates. Some terrific lefty scores. B.J. Tyson, their lead guard. Officials for this one, Pat Adams, Jeffrey Clark, John Hampton. It'll be Jabari Craig for the Pirates who are in black uniforms for the first time this year. Shaquille Morris, a rare loss tip for the Shockers in gold. E.C. with the basketball as we start on a Thursday night. And Wichita State starts in their man-to-man, -man, and it is physical. Anytime you play Wichita State, it starts with matching their physicality with the East Carolina team that has turned it over quite a bit this season. It, it starts with taking care of the basketball. Jabari Craig inside, throws it away. The takeaway for Rashard Kelly. The one thing the Shockers were looking to improve on right now, Greg Marshall told us at shoot around today, create more turnovers. They get one on the first possession. When well, they're playing a team that has turned it over quite a bit. Offensive rebound for Kelly, one of the nation's best offensive rebounders, and a beautiful bounce yeah. feed to Shamit for two. Tell you what, this is the best passing team I have seen all year, and, and that is not hyperbole. I mean, it's in the numbers. They're averaging over 18 assists a game. And a lot of the reason is, Kevin, they have shot makers in volume. I mean, in order to have a lot of assists, you got to have a lot of guys who can make shots, and the Shockers do. Well, on the other end, East Carolina has the conference leader in assists as Dmitry A. Spazievich finishes. Isaac Fleming is that conference leader, but he is not starting this game. We're told it's not injury-related. So the freshman Sean Williams, 55, makes the start for ECU. Here is Connor Frankamp. Dead-eye three-point shooter, but he's long on the first. And a good job on the defensive rebound there. You, you, you can do a good job first shot defense against Wichita State, but they will attack the glass. DJ Tyson way off on a three. East Carolina by percentage, the worst three-point shooting team in the country, 26%. Their interim head coach, Michael Perry, said, I want our shooters to keep shooting. Tyson off the mark on his first from deep. Shamit going to work on Williams. Morris has added this three-point range this year. Missed it. And a rebound to Tyson, the redshirt senior with over 1,300 career points. He is fouled. Well, I like the attack. Again, a team that has really struggled. You mentioned the three-point percentages. But if you can get out like this in the open floor, an attack, you don't have to play against that set Wichita State defense and try to get yourself something early. It has been such a struggle. Again, you go back to the turnovers. 21 turnovers against UCF, 21 turnovers the other day against UConn. 
And then when you don't shoot it well from the perimeter, there are a lot of other options. So getting out, those guards are so good at attacking. Tyson, their best free throw shooter at over 83%, and he hits both. DJ Tyson, 1,360 career points, moving up the ECU leaderboard, can move into seventh on the all-time list with 10 points today. Wichita State averaging its most points since 1979, over 85 a game for the Shockers. Last game Sunday, they beat USF 95-57. A three for Zach Brown is a misfire. And the Shockers are cold from deep to start. Kentrell Barkley, do it all junior, and an offensive foul against East Carolina. And those are the ones when you, you're trying to pitch an upset, those are the plays. It goes down as a turnover. Just a tough offensive foul. You got to be set, and you really got to wait for that. And look at these numbers with Wichita State. Again, they are so explosive offensively. The guys who start for them can clearly score, but they also get 31 points from their bench. They're about as deep as anybody at a high level in the country. Ten players at 14 minutes per game or more. That's a rare fourth shot right there. Shamit missed three. Four in a row missed by Wichita State. And ask Greg Marshall before the game, you know, with so many guys, how do you manage a rotation? He says, look, the guys playing the best are going to play. And the other guys either have to lift their game or they fall by the wayside. I mean, they've got nine different guys start this year. B.J. Tyson, a tough two. And a good start for the Pirates out of East Carolina. Six in a row after the opening bucket for Wichita State. Fran Camp, a look from three. He's got it. <laughs> Lift to the index finger to the Minji's Maniacs to temporarily shush the students. Well, and all five of the five guys out there can, can really hurt you offensively. And, and what a great pass from Shaq Morris to an open Fran Camp. Very unselfish team, and part of that is you got six seniors. Guys, as they get older, they understand the value of being unselfish. When you watch Wichita State, it, it seems like when they're going well, every pass is on point. Every shot selection is the right selection. Offensive rebound for Brown off the Kelly miss, and Zach Brown fouled on the way up. Free throws for Wichita State when we return to Greenville, North Carolina. Wichita State 31 and 5 last season lost to Kentucky in the round of 32 after winning the Missouri Valley and they brought back the house. McDuffie, Morris and Brown all tested the NBA waters. Shamit and Frank Camp who switched point guard and shooting guard spots midway through the season last year. Everybody is back for Wichita State. One of the reasons why they're a Final Four contender. Kevin Brown, Chris Patola. I mean, that might sound wild, a team that was yeah. in the Missouri Valley, but they are a Final Four contender, right? Uh, well, I've said it since the beginning of the year. I mean, unequivocally, I have them in the Final Four, and now they have Marcus McDuffie back, who's their leading returning scorer and rebounder. Look, this team starts four seniors, two of whom are redshirt seniors. They, they have six seniors on the team, Greg Marshall told us earlier, he said, look, I've had teams that had five seniors, never six. And I think for a group like this, it always starts with that. When you combine age with a team with, with just, they've got tall, long, athletic bodies that give you a ton of versatility. Zach Brown at the line for Wichita State. Greg Marshall has made a habit of this. 274 and 92 has won 75 percent of his games at Wichita State. It's taken this program to new heights and a new conference. I mean, let's face it. If Greg Marshall doesn't come to Wichita State. Who knows what happens? But I think it's safe to say they're not in the American Conference right now and getting extra national exposure. Well, look, they're not a mid-major. I mean, once you made a Final Four, it, that changes the narrative on your program. I mean, Gonzaga, VCU. Those types of programs have changed the narrative about mid-majors. I mean, look at this team. Again, depth, size, talent, NBA players. This is a terrific basketball team. It's been a program not of scrappy underdogs for some years now. Good, talented athletes, guys that have had success in the NBA. 
Landry Shabbat comes up with a loose ball here. Puts it back from Connor Frankham. Rado Nerger on his yeah. first touch. 6'10 senior from Estonia. And here's the thing on that possession. Frank Camp had a shot initially on that possession. He decides to give it up and get a better shot. And you end up getting a high percentage layup. That's the maturity offensively of this team. Nerger in the game with Marcus McDuffie. You mentioned he's back, not starting right now after missing 11 games with a stress fracture. Off the bench right now along with Daryl Willis. Isaac Fleming in the game for ECU. Floats one long, the rebound to Spasiewicz. East Carolina with a fresh shot clock. Barkley. First three of the game for ECU from Barkley. Just a 27% shooter from deep. Now Nerger misses the long one. B.J. Tyson guarded by McDuffie. That's where we really see the length of Wichita State. 6'8 McDuffie on the 6'3 Tyson. Fleming inside. Followed not there from Jabari Craig. And it is Wichita State ball. Saturday ESPN, a college hoops doubleheader for you. SEC and ACC action. And 4 Eastern Kentucky takes on Vanderbilt and Nashville. Then at 6.20th rank, North Carolina squares off against the Notre Dame team that's playing well despite some major losses. Colson and Farrell, both games streaming live on the ESPN app. There's a takeaway for Kentrell Berkeley. Tied a career high with five steals last weekend against Connecticut. Steal and slam here. Samaje Haynes Jones off to Daryl Willis. Barkley has the rebound. And that's been a great start to this half. Defensive rebounding and be a big part of why East Carolina has been so explosive it is just finishing those defensive possessions and not giving Wichita State extra opportunities. Tyson around Reeves and a whistle before the shot and a foul on the floor. You know, shooting the gap here and, and what a job by B.J. Tyson. Just reads this play all the way, shoots the gap and for a team that is offensively challenged, to get a dunk on the other end, it's actually Kentrell Barkley. I mean, just those guards for ECU. They've got experience, they're athletic, they're quick to the ball. Playing for Michael Perry, who took over on November 29th after Jeff Lebo resigned. Perry coached for 14 games last year with Lebo undergoing hip replacement surgery. Fleming into traffic and nowhere to go. Three to shoot for Williams. That didn't even hit the rim. Wichita State to push with five players right now all off the shocker bench. This is a second unit that might be in a buck 500 team in the conference in its own right. Well, I was going to say, their, their, their bench is better than most starting groups. Uh, again, they get 31 points per game from their bench which is top 20 in the country. Bench has outscored the opponent's bench in every game but one this season. Shockers at 13-2, and two, a difficult non-conference. Losses to Notre Dame and Oklahoma. That ball went through the legs of Nurture. Fleming keeps it. Finds Williams in the corner. A three. You want to pitch an upset, making threes is a big part of it. It's the ultimate equalizer. Pirates have hit two. Worst three-point shooting team in the country with a couple of big early triples. Well, not only are they feeding off the emotion of this crowd, which is fired up, by the way, they are feeding off hot shooting. Doesn't take much to get guys going, make some shots. 
in the offseason. Jeremy Shepard was going to be their starter at point guard. Raekwon Wilkins, a big defensive wing, suspended. They will not play this year. Seth Lede came from Virginia Tech. Good score and rebounder. Denied a waiver. And then the ultimate blow is Jeff Lebo. Nobody in this program, even despite the tough start, saw his resignation coming. No, it, it was a surprise. And look, the, the, the good thing is he's in a better place. He, he's with his family. He gets to do that. I mean, it, it, you don't want to keep doing it if your heart's not in it. The, the good thing is Michael Perry has stepped up and done a great job in a tough situation. And I will say this, look, th these teams in the American Conference now need to understand that the ante has been upped. And the addition of Wichita State has only upped it even more. This conference is tough, certainly at the top with, with Cincinnati and Wichita State. And you've got other programs that have struggled a little bit, but with great tradition. Memphis, SMU over the last couple years. Houston with Kelvin Sampson there now. What, so, kind, what kind of league is this to use? Three-bid league maybe this year? Four-bid sort of league? It's a two-bid league right now with Wichita State and Cincinnati. You know, Houston did not play well the other night against Wichita State. Uh, and I felt like, you know, with guys like Rob Gray, and I thought they were better, and they could still be. Memphis has really struggled. SMU up and down. So right now a two-bid league. Houston has bounced back. Got the nice one over Tulsa earlier today. Cougars in the very, very early bracketology of our own Joe wow. Lenardi were the last team in. How about Shaq yeah, Morris? I'll tell you what. Win. He kind of belies his size. You expect a guy like that to be a thundering dude and, and, and a hard rocking dude, which he is, but he's really light on his feet. Has a nice touch, good bounce to him. I'd like to be described by you someday as a hard rocking dude. That's my new personal goal. Well, you got it's my New Year's resolution. You, you got a long way to go, right. but keep working, my friend. You're. Uh, you and Shaq Morris next to each other would be yeah. a, a nice before and after. Yeah, let's let's try not to make that happen at the half, shall we? <laughs> Tip in underneath Morris with a miss for Shard Kelly there to clean it up for Wichita State. They are one of the best passing teams you mentioned yes, earlier they are. that you've seen. They're a great rebounding team too, and they've always been in Greg Marshall's time. And they play hard. You know, it's it's a commodity that you, you can try to teach. Some of it's innate. It's way off the mark from Jabari Craig. Starters back out there for Wichita State. Shamit. Uncontested rebound for Sean Williams. Fleming into the teeth of the defense loves to penetrate. He can get himself in trouble down there, though. And another miss for Craig. And a good shot. I mean, you got to live with that shot. Four feet from the basket. A nice hook by Craig. Connor Frank kept been his first year at Kansas before transferring here. Wow. What a home he has found <laughs> at Wichita State. Well, and, and talk about Shaq Morris with that derriere. He carves out a nice little angle to the bucket for Fran Camp. Seven in a row for Wichita State. What's been a game of runs early. Foul against East Carolina going the other way. Another NBA Friday doubleheader with the West top two teams in action. Steph Curry and the Warriors head to Milwaukee. Take out Giannis Antetokounmpo and the Bucks at 8 Eastern. And Chris Paul to the Rockets to the Valley of the Sun. Coverage tips at 7 Eastern with NBA Countdown. Shocker's been a little bit cold from deep in the early going. Just one of eight. It's a program that came into tonight. Hitting nearly 10 threes per game. Frankamp with a miss. Knocked away by Brown, but he's the last to touch it. Now, East Carolina has not shot the ball well from the three this year. They have defended the three well, though. Best three point field goal percentage D in the American. And in yeah. fact, they've not allowed 10 threes in a game this year. Well, it's, it is one of the things they've done well. Uh, again, they don't they don't have a lot of talent. They've had a lot of chaos. This year, preseason, and so they're playing with a with a deck that's not fully stacked. But again, they play hard. They've got really experienced guards, talented guards, and they've done a nice job defensively, especially guarding that perimeter. Sean Williams 
Usman Haruna has the ball taken away by Brown. All the way down the court, Brown tried to feed Kelly, and that is a turnover. Greg Marshall did not love that pass from Brown. A throw away down the floor. Wichita State's pick gone to a full full court pickup here, trapping on that initial pass. A 1 2 1 1. Force these guards to handle a little bit. Again, not a deep East Carolina team. And an offensive foul called against Usman Haruna. I was watching the UConn game with ECU. They had about three of those. And again, they go down as turnovers. So it, it's a simple play. You get up there, set it, and, and a lot of it, most of the time, is on the guard. You got to wait until the big guy's set, allow him to set, and then come off. Those are wasted possessions in a, in a two point game here in the first half. Haruna in for Jabari Craig, who has two fouls, and Haruna picks up a quick first. Only a couple of bigs for this East Carolina team, which lost a ton of its post play from last year. Shabbat up top. Kelly down with it. Back up to score. Richard Kelly, the senior out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. I, I love that dude. I really do, man. I, I would go to battle with a Richard Kelly any day. He's got a relentless motor, never takes a day off, and just really understands the game of basketball. Third in the conference in rebounding, one of the best offensive rebounders in the country. And he has the rebound here. He is. He's pulling down about four offensive rebounds a game. And how about that look? To the finish. Great look by Shamit. Great finish by McDuffie. And a bad foul against Taruna. And a nice push. And, and Marcus McDuffie back in the fold. His fifth game back after being hurt. And what an addition. Nice look by Landry Shamit. You know, Ask Greg Marshall said, You guys are playing so well offensively. What's the difference? He said, Marcus McDuffie. And he ended the statement. He said, look, he, he's he's a high level talent. He's playing at the four, a very tough matchup at that position. And he gives us, us an ego, gives us a verb because of his talent. He was four of five from three on Sunday, McDuffie. Here's a steal for Kelly on the pressure. Austin Reeves. McDuffie taps it out, keeps the possession alive. It's a young man, McDuffie, who led them in scoring and rebounding last year. Major draws the contact, and the run continues for Wichita State. 14 in a row for Marcus McDuffie and the Shockers. We got a good one, baby. Call your friends up. Four teams, two conferences, one blockbuster night. High-level college basketball here. Oh! What a fun night this is going to be. Monday on ESPN. Four top 25 teams in action. That'll be a fun one Monday night, part of our Sonic Blockbuster series. Wichita State certainly worthy of blockbuster inclusion. Dominant in the paint right now behind Marcus McDuffie. You know, his return so huge for a team that was already really good. And, and part of it, it, you know, when he came back, Greg Marshall said the first couple games he tried to do too much. He wanted to force it all into his first game back. You know, part of, too, a guy coming back from an injury, when you're not quite in shape, you're not comfortable with your health, you're thinking too much. It's a tough, tough sport to play with a cluttered mind. And he's now he's become more instinctual. He's starting to play more instinctively. Greg Marshall said he tried to squeeze 11 games yeah. worth of action into one game, yeah. but he has shot the ball well the last two. Just as Obasoha, the junior walk on into the game because Usman Haruna has three fouls and Jabari Craig two, and Obasoha drains the bucket. Nice pass. Nurzer off the feed from Rashard Kelly. They are the quintessential give up a good shot to get a great shot. Again, Kelly had a shot, gave it up to get a better one from Nurger. Isaac Fleming draws a contact, blocking foul against Nurger, and a chance for three for the Hawaii transfer Fleming.
Again, they've been so good at, at getting to the basket. That's one of these, these one of the things these guards do so well. Not great perimeter shooters, but terrific at attacking the paint. They're all left-handed, which is a little bit unconventional from a matchup standpoint. All three of those starting guards left-handed. Take time to adjust to a left-handed player. Is it just well, you know, as much being as aware. what's funny, it's being aware, and part of that's in scouting. But I can't tell you how many times I've been told, or you tell players, that a guy is left-handed, leading up to playing that game, and on the first play that allows the guy to go left, and you're screaming at him, "Did you not pay attention to the scouting report?" Never happened to you as a player, right? Never, ever. I got yelled at for many other things. Reeves, Morris, tic-tac-toe inside, and the Shockers continue to dominate the paint. Wichita State has 11 made field goals in the game. 10 have come inside the paint, only one from three. Fleming got himself into trouble again. Knocked away by McDuffie in the hands of Barkley, eight to shoot. Shannon with a nice denial inside on Spazievich. And Williams lost the handle. Zach Brown for the Shockers. Brown denied at the rim by Obasohan and Spazievich. Sharon is carrying, and this is, I'm telling you, it's the best passing team in the country. And their interior passing has been so good. I mean, just a nice little drop off there to Morris. And that's part of maturity. You know, players, young players are, are so focused on getting their shot off. I'm not getting a look. You're not running a play for me. And with six seniors, two of whom are redshirt seniors, this team is all about getting a bucket. Doesn't matter who gets it. 10 assists now and 12 made field goals for Wichita State. Shamit with his fifth there to find Austin Reeves. Landry Shamit only has one basket. Nice. Oh, but so hot from Spazievich. Spazievich is going to be a good player. He's a freshman, but he's 20 years old, has a lot of international experience. 6'8", 230 from Serbia, good size, good passer. Third in the conference field goal percentage. Oh, but so on. That was a little heat check shot yeah, right there. Yeah, that's not a good shot. I mean, you're playing the, the number five team in the country. That, that's not a good shot. You can get that at any point in the shot clock. Another offensive rebound for Wichita State and Brown. Great spacing right now by the Shockers. Morris off the mark. One by Reeves. Chance for a third shot on the possession. McDuffie gets to the line. Wichita State is doubling up ECU on the glass. They are. You know, this could be a beautiful game when you share the basketball. When the ball moves from a pair of hands to a pair of hands and a drop off, and what do you do when you, when you share it? Three, four, five passes. The open man ends up with a dunk. And there you go. Ten assists already for Wichita State. A team that averages over 18 assists a game. Shockers with a couple of substitutes here. C.J. Kaiser, Connor Frankham. Darrell Willis Jr. will check in as well. These guys go legitimately 11 deep. Kaiser's the 11th man, and he might be their best raw athlete. Big difference with ECU, which, because of a couple of big men in foul trouble, has gone to the walk-on, Obisohan. In fairness to him, he has played well. That is out of bounds off of Barkley, who could not handle the pass from Spazievich. Seventh turnover for East Carolina. You brought up the issues earlier. They have compounded for this Pirates team. Shamit lost the dribble and a rare turnover against Landry Shamit. But a nice job by Fleming. Again, East Carolina gets it back. One of the areas where they have done well. That perimeter defense 
Those guards will get into you. And a nice job by Fleming, just being aggressive and, and forcing Shamit into a, a spot position where he wasn't comfortable. And there aren't many of those for Shamit. I'm not sure how Shamit is as a public speaker, how he'd be as a theater major, but certainly on the basketball court, he's comfortable about everywhere. He's a great leader, and he belies his age. You know, only a, a sophomore, a redshirt sophomore. But he's got a calming presence about him. Has that same mental toughness that we've seen with Wichita State guards in the yeah. past. Talk about Ron Baker, Fred Van Vliet, yeah. both of whom are in the NBA. That's where you think he's going to end up. He, he is absolutely a pro. I mean, start with his size at that position. I mean, he's a legit 6'4", about 185 pounds. And I asked Greg Marshall before the game, you know, how do you compare him to Van Vliet and, and Ron Baker? He said, well, he's a better shooter than both of them. And he said he's a little bit bouncier. He's not, he's not necessarily a, a better athlete, but he's, he's bouncier. He's got a, a feel to how to maneuver his body. Fleming around the screen. Three to shoot. Fleming's got to get it on the rim. He did. With that left hand, something about lefties, when they get it back to that left hand, it seems so predominant. Kelly, hop step and a drop off taken away by the Pirates. And a nice rotation underneath by ECU, helping the helper. Barkley, good shot fake. Kelly tried to draw the charge. Barkley went around him. Kelly has the rebound. Fifth rebound for Richard Kelly. C.J. Kaiser. Kelly, another offensive board. Frank Kemp. Finally, a three goes down for Wichita State. Two for 13 from deep for the Shockers. Give me a little more, Richard Kelly. I mean, he, that possession's to him. That bucket is to him. He kept the possession alive with the old board, and Fran Camp ended up with it. Rashard Kelly, his goal to be the best conditioned athlete on the floor. He's been tonight. Yeah, I love hearing from Coach Crean in the Chris Patola Memorial Chair back in studio. You know, it's uh, he is he is one of the one of the good guys is Coach Crean and Dallin Cuff too. Chris Cotter. Dallin's all right. That's, too, a yeah. dream, that's a dream crew they have back that, there in studio tonight. Just like Wichita State, great balance all the way around back at Bristol. Here's a steal for Fleming, zero on zero over Kelly, and Richard Kelly called for the foul. That's the one area where East Carolina has gotten some consistent scoring is in the open floor. Fleming, Tyson, guys attacking the basket. Isaac Fleming, 61.5% free throw shooter, well short on the first. Shockers just come at you in waves. McDuffie back into the game with Zach Brown. Greg Marshall, when we asked him what he loves about his team, one of the things was they're so interchangeable. And then Michael Perry said they have two of everything. It's almost like, and he didn't say this, I'm saying it's almost like Noah's Ark. You have two long wings, two dead-eye three-point shooters, two good point guards, two skilled big men. Second team that could play with anybody's first. A whole bunch of reserves in right now. One of them, Daryl Willis, has an easy two. Well, that's why I think they want to begin to use that depth to help their defense. When they haven't played well, they haven't guarded teams. 
in Oklahoma, they struggled against guarding Trey Young in ball screens. And for an older team, you would expect them to be better or more consistent on that end. They're, I think they're getting to that point. And again, having McDuffie back helps. Zach Brown with a dunk off the takeaway. Nine Shockers have scored tonight. That's the largest lead right now for Wichita State. Saturday on ESPN, we've got a college troops doubleheader with a couple of ranked teams and some major programs. Kentucky off a late rally against Texas A&M goes to Nashville against Vandy and UNC at Notre Dame in South Bend at 6. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app. I'm telling you right now, Kentucky's going to end up winning the SEC again. You think so? I think it's just the process for them. I, I do. I, I think those guys are... Some of them are hit a wall. I think Kevin Knox has hit a little bit of a wall, but but the maturation of those teams is is the same. Folks, if you haven't seen Kentucky play yet this year, the kid who's really starting to stand out is a freshman who's not a five star. And they got a whole lot of those. Haynes Jones, a three for Wichita State. Shea Gilgis Alexander has done just about everything. And some of these wins of late for Kentucky. Wichita State up by 19, the largest lead for the Shockers. We're back in a flash to Greenville. Wichita State just about unbeatable at home the last five years, but let's face it, they're just about unbeatable anywhere yeah. they play. Most road wins in the country since 2013. Only Middle Tennessee coming into tonight had an. Uh, an active win streak that was longer. Well, this is a program that when they do go on the road, especially in the Missouri Valley and now in the AAC, they're going to have a target on their back. They become one of those teams. You're going to have a, a blackout. You're going to have a, a themed night. And they are used to it. Reeves, nice job to keep the ball in bounds. Haynes Jones, the Juco All-American from last year, is fouled. He'll be shooting for Wichita State. And a late second foul on Kentrell Barkley, a player the Pirates can ill afford to lose. Samaje Haynes Jones out of Hutchinson Community College. Led them to a national title last year. Leaves the free throw short. Tyson, that will not count. We had action as Zach Brown tried to get over the screen. Brown is called for the foul. That's the second foul against Zach Brown, and it puts ECU in the bonus. Barkley is 70% free throw shooter on the season. Junior out of Durham. Andrew Shamit will check in for the final 53.9. Barkley is again a, a good player. He, he led them in points and rebounds last year. Uh, just shot it well. You know, it's so hard. The, the game becomes so challenging when you can't consistently knock down a perimeter shot. 26 percent from deep for which uh, for ECU beg your pardon. Wichita State one of the best three point shooting teams in the country and Shamit hits the triple. His first of the game and Wichita's fourth from deep. Pirates can take this down to the end of the shot clock if they want. Essentially hold for one. Fleming. And an inertia four to shoot. Tyson along two. Rebound for Reeves. Austin Reeves at the horn. And Wichita State leads by 22. Third straight game where the Shockers lead by 20 plus at the half. They look to go to 4-0 in their new conference. Plus 16 on the boards, plus 22 on the scoreboard. Chris Cotter, Dalen Cup, and Tom Green coming up after this in the Lander Over Halftime Report.
Welcome back to Greenville, North Carolina, and a big lead for Wichita State, tied with Purdue for the number five ranking in the country. The Shockers all over ECU, leading by 22 here at the break. Kevin Brown, Chris Patola alongside, right in front of the Minji's Maniacs, who were fired up early. ECU led this game 14 to 9, but yeah. Wichita State has just worn them down ever since. Yeah, they, they picked up the defense and started picking up full court, but they, they are so good at sharing the basketball. It almost wears you down as you try to track who's got it where and what. I mean, 14 assists on their 17 field goals in the first half. Sharing is caring, and they shared in that first half. They always give up a good shot to get a great shot. And they have done that all year. Average over 18 assists a game at 14 in that first half. Look at that, just dropping off, giving up that layup to get a dunk. And really the tail of that half shot a great percentage. They have dominated the glass, which they have done all year. Pretty lopsided first half, Kev. Fourth in the country in rebounding margin. They've out-rebounded their opponent in every game but one. And that was an 18-point win over Houston where they were out-rebounded by one thanks to some late carom. So it's not a surprise to see them up. But the plus 17 on the boards is a striking, striking number. Here is Shaq Morris going to work on Jabari Craig. Shot way off the mark. East Carolina hoping to get out, have some chances to run in this half. How do you come back if you're ECU? What's the message? It seems like such a daunting task against this team. Well, you have to string stops together, and you can't turn it over. you got to get a look, good look. And, I mean, that's a tough shot. got to get a good look every time and hopefully hit some threes. It's tough it is the yeah. overarching summary. Shocker team in its first year in the American after 72 years in the Missouri Valley Conference. 68 and 4 in conference play the last four years. Unbeaten to start this year as Shaq Morris steps out. He's got six points for Wichita State. It's interesting, Greg Marshall going with McDuffie to start this second half. You imagine at some point this would be the Shockers starting lineup. And McDuffie is in over Zach Brown, who picked up a late second foul in the first half. Craig, fumble inside, five to shoot. Tyson on the drive, contact. And that's going the other way. Offensive foul against B.J. Tyson, his second. I hate to be uh, so overt with my love for Rashard Kelly. But we have seen him do every intangible effort thing here tonight. Block shots, offensive rebounds, there he takes a charge. Deflections, steals, assists. It's a love affair, is what it is. Be overt. I will. I'm fine with it. I will. Just don't want to make you uncomfortable. <laughs> Morris with a throwdown from Shabbat. If you're wearing purple right now, you're uncomfortable. Largest lead for Wichita State in the first meeting between these two new conference rivals. Barkley guarded by Kelly. Again, Richard Kelly all over the place. Here he commits a foul. Perhaps worried of too much effusive praise. Yeah, I, I think he's uh, starting to worry about my affection. <laughs> this, the game is simple, and that defense is not great. <laughs> I mean, if you're Kentrell Barkley, you've got to stay home until your teammate gets back to, to the rim. But that's, you know, again, they, they run really good offense. A lot of motion, and, and really even after their sets, Michigan, uh, Wichita State, I should say, goes right to this motion. A lot of flare screens, some back screens like we saw there. And again, when you, when you pass the ball as well as they do, ends up becoming real efficient. Barkley, two for two at the line. You know, McDuffie's in the game. You mentioned he's out there to start the second half. He was a starter last year. Do you think he'd get back into the starting lineup yeah. at some point? The way they're playing, Brown hits another three. Yeah, I mean, you go in the direction of talent. And, you know, Zach Brown's a terrific player. But, but ultimately, I think Wichita State ends up being that final four team that I think they are with McDuffie in your starting lineup. 
Craig. Zach Brown was in the middle of that with his two fouls, and Brown just picked up his third. I mean, here's the thing, like, McDuffie led them in scoring, rebound, and steals last year. He, he's so impactful. And look at Shamit, just, I mean, just carving up the defense, draws help, the toss out there to Zach Brown. I mean, it just, again, you're talking about a, an elite level point guard who's gonna make a lot of money playing this game. Shamit had just two points, uh, just three points, beg your pardon, in the win over USF on Sunday. He scored 95 Wichita State, so didn't much matter. He had seven assists. He has tied a career high tonight with eight. And again, this is a young man who might be the conference player of the year right now. And he scored just seven points in the last three halves yeah. plus a couple of minutes. But he's sharing the ball so well. Well, he never forces anything. I mean, that's where the maturity of his game comes in. And, and even still, he's averaging 16 points a game on a season. You have to go back to Clay Anthony early. He was the only player under Greg Marshall at Wichita State to average more than that. Nice hands by Tyson. Knocked it away from Shaq Morris. Tyson back on the bounce from Barkley to the rim. And East Carolina is picking up some early fouls on Wichita State. Austin Reeves is second. You know, you think about it. it Shamit learns from a guy like Fred Van Vliet, who was one of the best guards in the country at the end of his career. You know, you learn from a Ron Baker. And think about the competition in practice. I mean, I, I think that's one of the understated things about the depth. We always talk about depth and the impact in game. But think about in practice, these guys going against each other every day. We talked about how good that second unit would be. A couple of second unit players right now are out there. Reeves along with Willis for the Shockers. McDuffie and a foul against Jabari Craig is his third. That's the matchup problem with him at the four. He's that face up guy. He, he plays the position inside rebounds like a four but then he can take you out and, and that's been the problem for ECU tonight. Their bigs can't stay in the game because of foul trouble. One of the problems for ECU. Uzman Haruna got three quick ones in that first half. Mm. Willis, nice dribble. Willis scores over Craig. That is high level. There are three things in that move that were delicious. Darrell Willis, a good scorer out of Pearl River Community College in Mississippi. He has become more unselfish. He has really filled out every part of his game this year for Wichita State. Spazievich. Well, Spazievich played 40 minutes the other day against UConn, had a career-high 12 points. Uh, he's, he's going to be a good player in, in a season that's been a tough, a tough go. He is a bright spot. Here's Marcus McTuffie. Five straight field goals made by Wichita State. By the way, McDuffie's now tied for the team lead. He, Frank, Cap, and Morris all have eight. Nobody in double figures in the Shockers lead by 27. Frank Cap with a, drizzle, a dribbling display. Shabbat with a triple. And a steal, McDuffie. When it rains, it pours in the Coliseum here in Greenville. It is pouring. And Daryl Willis giving him a little whoop. They get the cross. And then he takes you on the reverse. It's delicious here. Guys, thank you. Wichita State not looking to go to overtime at the moment.
East Carolina has 29 and trails by more than that. Shockers keep the pressure on after the timeout. Isaac Fleming nearly lost it again. Barkley. And Samaje Haynes Jones has the rebound for Wichita State. Haynes Jones takes it to the basket. Kelly. That's a walk. Shockers will try to extend their run when we return to Greenville. Wichita State Shockers led by Landry Shamit, who's tied a career high in assists tonight. He is an outstanding passer and a willing passer. And he does it in a lot of ways, off the bounce, and makes the simple play. You know, the kick out, he's not trying to go high risk, high reward. He, he, he keeps it simple, and these guys feed off it. Makes a lot of those other guys around him better. And Wichita State keeps that pressure up. Shabbat named today to the Wooden Award midseason top 25. The only player in the American Conference named to that top 25 watch list. Austin Reeves picks up his third foul for Wichita State. And Austin Reeves is coming out of this game. C.J. Kaiser returns. You know, it's interesting with Shamit too, and this is a guy who had, had surgery in July, had a screw put in his right foot of his fifth metatarsal. And to come back from that and, and have a year he's having. Pretty good. Yeah, that same injury to his left foot a couple of years ago, which is why he had to redshirt the freshman season. Great defense here by Wichita State. Fleming takes a long two way off the mark. Possession kept alive by Barkley. Wichita State hounds for 30. They'll try to hound for 30 more. Haynes Jones on Fleming. Stripped in the lane, taken away by Kaiser. C.J. Kaiser feeds Kelly, and an easy throwdown for Richard Kelly. 20 assists for Wichita State, sixth time this season that your best passing team in the country has done just that. Tyson. Greg Marshall said before the game, there's one thing we want to improve, it's forcing turnovers. Yeah, and that's where, again, the passing becomes accentuated. You, you give them the ball on the turnover, and then you've got the, the guys like Kelly running the floor, McDuffie running the floor, Zach Brown. I mean, just go down the list. Those guys are, are outstanding finishers. Look at that. 11 turnovers forced, but the conversion into 20 points is exceptional. Quick blocking foul against C.J. Kaiser. I, I know some folks might be channel surfing right now. That's still a thing that people do in 2018, flipping through, see this score. Say, why am I tuning in to 63-29? You're tuning in because of what Wichita State does, how they attack defensively, because of how well they move the ball. I mean, if you want a team to follow this season. You want to look at a legitimate national contender on tonight. Only top 10 team in action in the country. Wichita State whips it around as well as anyone. We will hang on for a second here for an official review after the foul against Kaiser. In a 63-29 game, I'm keeping a clock on this official review. Clock's over. <laughs> we'll get an explanation right now from Jeffrey Clark. They were looking for a flagrant. He said it ended up, uh, after further review, just a common foul. And aren't we all lucky? Here is your further review. Oh, yeah, underneath between the, the two bodies that fell under there. East Carolina just one field goal hit in this second half so far. Got a few free throws.
Barkley down to seven to shoot. Slow developing possession for ECU, but it ends with a bucket from Tyson. And going to his right was the lefty to get it back to that left hand with the floater. Nice move by Tyson. Another lefty off the mark for Wichita State, Samaje Haynes Jones. Tyson, nice find to Barkley. And Barkley puts in a tough two. Those are the two, the big scores for East Carolina. Tyson at 15.7 per game, Barkley at 12.4 and a whole lot more. Wichita State turns it over. Ninth turnover by the Shockers. What do you learn about your team in a spot like this? Well, it's a good question because, you know, some people may tune in and say, why are they still pressing? They're up 30. I mean, this is about Wichita State's habits. They're not playing this game now to beat East Carolina. They're playing this for much bigger things. And so it's about their habits, continuing to play hard, working on that pressure. And it, it's opportunity, obviously, to give guys like C.J. Kaiser some minutes and see some different lineups. Nurger, a guy who hasn't played as much of late. Offensive foul, the fourth foul against Jabari Craig for ECU. And Craig is going to check out for Justice Obasohan. There is Ronald Nurger, big senior out of Estonia. Shockers were thinking about redshirting him a couple of years ago for their graduate transfer, Anton Grady, but they kept Nurgers. They burned his redshirt. They kept him in the rotation. Ended up being big down the season, major minutes in the NCAA tournament, and he continues to develop his game here. He does. I mean, it's a nice little move. Good seal there. Went to his left hand and dropped it home with a little kiss. You have to pay, I think, a trademark fee for that. Oh, I do. I get invoiced, believe me. <laughs> I'm paying out the, out the tooth. Yeah. Don't talk about anybody's defensive principles, so help you. <laughs> Three-point play for Nurger, the skilled big man who added some strength this offseason. Tyson into the teeth of Haynes Jones. This Carolina team that has had to deal with quite a bit this year. Losing players to transfer, losing players to suspension, losing players to injury. They have played hard. Though they're a bit undermanned, to say the least. McDuffie and double figures for Wichita State. Marcus McDuffie leading the way with 12. Well, and this is the disparity in the American Athletic Conference right now. I mean, this is the best team in the conference versus a team that, again, has had a lot of chaos, a lot of disruption coming into this year. Uh, but I'll tell you what, Wichita State is loaded. We got a good one, baby. Call your friends up. Four teams. Two conferences, one blockbuster night. High level college basketball here. Oh. What a fun night this is going to be. Monday on ESPN. Good game of the ACC to open that doubleheader. Blue Devils and Hurricanes. Another competitive year in the ACC. NC State leads Clemson by six right now, midway through the second half over on ESPN. What do you take away, Chris Patola, looking at this top 12? Well, I, look, I think that top is, once again, as, as the ACC always is, very good. I mean, I mean he, you know, any of those, Virginia, Clemson, certainly Duke is going to be there, North Carolina, you know, those four teams uh, are playing very well. Second, potentially third weekend teams in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, how about NC State? A team that loses by 30 earlier last week to Notre Dame on the road. Then comes back, beats Duke just really decisively in Raleigh. And then up here on Clemson. And they, NC State gets news today. They get Markel Johnson back, who is uh, 
probably wind up in their starting lineup at some point. You said that group is a potential group that top four of, of second, third weekend tournament teams. Clemson included for you in that? I do, yeah. And I think this, because defensively, you know, we always talk about Clemson defensively. I think this is the best version defensively that they have had. And, you know, the thing with Clemson, look, Jerron Blossom game was a good player. I, I thought, I don't know how productive he was on any given night. And, and having him, I thought, became a distraction. They've got experienced guards. Uh, they have some good size and length inside. And they're playing really well. I do. I think Clemson's a good team. B.J. Tyson, the last two for East Carolina. Tyson leading the way with 11 for the Pirates. Haynes Jones, nice cut to the basket and score. Haynes Jones is the 10th the junior college All-American to sign with Greg Marshall. Darrell Willis, another junior college All-American on this Wichita State squad. Tyson continues his scoring surge, a chance for three. Now, this was a, a game where Wichita State was a heavy favorite, but if you're a top 10 team, look both ways before you cross the street this year. It has been a season of chaos so far. Yeah, it, it has. I, you know, I, I don't want to use ever the word parody. I, I think we overuse that. I, I think it's a sport where this time of year we see a lot of upsets. You go back to last weekend, 13 teams in the top 25 all played on the road. Nine of them lost. It, it, you know, what that tells me is playing in conference, especially on the road, is tough. And it's a sport where on any given night, good teams can lose. I, I think ultimately we know who's going to be there. It, it's like that every year. I mean, that teams in a tournament end up being the same ones. And so, I, I, you know, there's not as much parity, I think, as we think. You don't know what I think, Chris Patola. Oh, yes, I do. Been reading your mind all night, and what? I'm not liking what I'm seeing. Shaq Morris, the last bucket for Wichita State. Morris rejects Tyson. Not a fan of chicken. You didn't know I was going to say that. Is that Tyson is your go-to chicken brand? I, I would have gone Purdue, <laughs> frankly. They make a darn good chicken. Yeah, they could play some hoops as well. Right now, Wichita State should have a little T next to that number. Wichita State and Purdue are actually tied for fifth in the AP poll this week. Shamit looking for a ninth assist. He's got it. Morris with the left hand, and there's a career high. Nine assists for Landry Shamit. Sohan. Spasievich. Dmitrie Spasievich for East Carolina. He's been through a, a lot as a player. Played for the under 18, under 19 Serbian national team. So he's got that international experience. Nicely defended there. Got the rebound after the miss by Kelly. Tyson. Oh, Kelly came out of nowhere to get that one. He is such a good shot blocker. Leaves from Shabbat. Again, offense created by the activity of Rashard Kelly. And that's 10 assists for Shamit, who is a bucket away from a double-double. Barkley. There's not a whole lot in the way a half court sets right now in this game. This is some street ball. Well, the pressure creates some of that on the other end here for, for East Carolina, but you're right. This, this game has gotten a little bit to that degree. It's fun to watch, in particular, Wichita State in that setting. You can play at just about any tempo. Shockers, the class of their new conference, the American. Up big in the first all-time meeting.
That is a sight that I really want to see finished and also want to have burned out of my brain simultaneously. <laughs> hey, Sports Center tonight, Chris Patola, 11 Eastern. What's wrong with the Cavs? Blown out again against the Raptors. Top 10 plays the first half of the NBA. And could Le'Veon Bell really retire? An ESPN exclusive, a warning to the Steelers. Sports Center streaming live I'll, on the ESPN app. I'll tell you what's wrong with the Cavs. LeBron James has been to seven straight finals. He does not care about January games. But we must care, Chris. We have to care about the Cavs. We can care. We're going to discuss it on Sports Center. I'm just telling you the answer. That's it. LeBron has been to seven straight finals. Oh. He does not care about January games. Raptors continue to play well, right behind the Celtics, who will lead the Eastern Conference. And the Cavs will turn it on in a few months. Tyson with a miss. Rono Nurger having a nice game with 12 for Wichita State, one of three players with 12. Three missed by Zach Brown. And then the rebound to Oba Sohan. It looks like Greg Marshall's called off the dogs a little bit. In a zone, well, they're going to keep playing, but in a zone, that last possession, soon they're not going to press anymore. Nurser with a tasty throwdown. Block on the other end was from the big Danish freshman, Asbjorn Midgard. Seven foot 270 freshman out of Helsingor, Denmark. Midgard 22 in gold and black. Obasohan, the offensive rebound and put back. Nice minutes for the freshman big Midgard, who is a 12th man in what really is an 11 man team. He's playing in his eighth game for Wichita State. Hard to get minutes behind Shaq Morris and Darren Willis. And this guy. Yeah, this team is so good in transition. I mean, it just, you know, they have shot makers in volume. So when you look at their numbers, they got so many guys who can score in a lot of ways. And, and we've talked about the unselfishness, willing to give it up. Twenty-seven assists on thirty-three buckets for Wichita State. How about another double-double for Shamit? Eleven and ten. So they are still a little bit of a containment press here back to the two three zone. So they've we've seen the one two one one quite a bit tonight. I think Greg Marshall just taking a look at some things. Shockers are now tied a season high by the way. Twenty eight assists in the game. Oh, but Sohan lost it. Taken away by Brown. 28 assists on Sunday in the win over South Florida. Now, oh, thought there was going to be 29. Called too early. Midgard couldn't finish the bunny from Shamit. Fleming misses a three. Shamit. Oh. Those are the killers. You watch back the tape and you, you know, two points got away there. Drives down that 55% field goal percentage coming into the That's game. That's what I mean, especially for a guy who is so passing oriented, pass first guy to lose two points on a, on a bunny that was down. Wichita State looking to go up by 40. Game they trailed 14 to 9 early on. Oh, Mickgard uh, taken out by the hardwood monster there. That looked like you were earlier <laughs> okay. trying to dance across the floor. Thankfully, there's no video. Hey, Wichita State's going to lead this by 40 if it gets another bucket, and nobody's got more than 15. <laughs> <laughs> the cards he hearing is, it right now. Well, he knows, man. This is that's gonna that's gonna have legs on the bus in the hotel, <laughs> in practice, in video. That one's gonna have legs. Shockers going deep into the bench. Caleb Malone is on the junior walk-on. 
Daryl Willis with a three. Have McDuffie back in the game too, which you probably aren't going to see a few games from now, but still in only his fifth game. Yeah. Try to get some of that rust off when you can. Well, and still working himself into shape. You know, there's nothing like playing in games and running up and down the floor. He needs the reps. Nice little wrap around there by Dmitry Spazijevic. Freshman out of Serbia for ECU. Shockers came into this game averaging under 85, just a hair under. 87 and counting with three and a half to go. Wichita State and ECU, first time rivals here in the American Athletic Conference. Wichita State was a member of the Missouri Valley Conference for 72 years. There are some old MVC rivals in this conference, but they have to develop some new rivalries now. So we thought we'd give this game a name, Chris Patola. Inspired by UCF and USF, the war for I-4. This is the war on I-64, 35, 435, 70 East, 77 South, US 52, and I-264 is 19 hours, 36 minutes, according to Google Maps, if you left Greenville right now to get to Wichita State University. You know, it's got a nice ring to it. I think so, uh, yeah. I don't know if you could fit it on a t-shirt. Front and back, maybe. You know, we, we have fun with this, and it's a conference, the American Athletic Conference, that sort of formed as a conference of misfit toys out of the remnants of the old Big East, but you can completely understand this move from the conference's sake. AAC did not need to add a 12 team, and from Wichita State's sake, Shockers last year were 31 and 5, analytically one of the best teams in Division One, and yet they snuck in with a 10 seed even after winning yeah. their conference tournament. This is going to help them in basketball this year and in the long run. Well, and, and look, they got robbed with those seedings. Anybody with eyes could could see that they were much better, and, and the committee either overthought it or intentionally underseeded them. So. You know, I don't think league necessarily had anything to do with that, but your point is valid. I mean, there, there are going to be better games from a resume standpoint, and it's good for the league to, to have that reference point of Wichita State on there. Saturday ESPN college basketball doubleheader. We start in the SEC where Kentucky takes on Vanderbilt in Nashville. The young cats trying to find their footing. Then North Carolina and Notre Dame at 6 Eastern, the defending champs off to South Bend. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app. Never want to bypass the walk-ons, by the way. The last Wichita State bucket was scored by Brett Barney, 6'9", walk-on out of Wichita. Darrell Willis Jr. at the line right now. You have a heart for the walk-ons. I have a heart for the walk-ons, sure. Well... I don't think it's a shock to say I wouldn't have been a scholarship player had I chosen to pursue college basketball. There's nothing like having your name set on TV. They, they deserve it. They do. Guys who play as hard as anyone, members of the scout team in practice. It's Greg Marshall's team looks to move to 4-0 in conference play for the sixth straight year. New conference. Same level of Dominance from Wichita State. As Bjorn Mitgard back in the game for Wichita State as Barkley hits a three. There's a travel against Kalen Malone, the junior walk on out of McKinney, Texas. Is the American right now, is it Wichita State versus Cincinnati in your mind, a clear top two? It is right now, yeah. And, you know, and again, I, it, Memphis is down. I, I think SMU has been good. I think they will continue to be very well coached by Tim Jankovic. Houston uh, will, I think, get better as this year goes on. They, they certainly have talent. They're well coached. Programs with good tradition, but, but as it is, Right now, as we sit here, I, I certainly think Wichita State, Cincinnati are, are the only two tournament teams. 
You know, credit to the American for the scheduling of this league as well. Shockers have some good games coming up, home and away with Tulsa. That rivalry they call the Havoc in the Heartland game. Good one with UCF on January 25th as well. The American has intentionally scheduled their top teams against each other. So Wichita State plays Cincinnati twice, plays SMU twice, UCF twice, Cincinnati and SMU play twice. Uh, Temple, which has been a little bit down of late, but had a nice one at SMU, gets Wichita State twice. So the marquee teams and the marquee brands in the conference yeah. are getting these home and aways. Maybe the coaches don't all love a tougher schedule. Maybe if you ask Greg Marshall or Mick Cronin, gave him some truths here, and they'd rather not face some of those teams twice. But I think it is good for the league, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, there's no question about it. And, and that's why, you know, coaches will give you different reactions. But, but I go back to th this is another great reference point. And, and you're hoping that, you know, a rising tide lifts, lifts all boats in, in Wichita State being that rising tide. I will say this, they, they've got one of the most forward-thinking commissioners in all of college athletics in Mike Oresco. He, he, he's given this league a swagger. He's given this league confidence. And he's done a nice job since taking over. And again, a tough position where you're taking some cast-offs from other leagues. Brett Barney, by the way, had the last bucket again for Wichita State. The walk-on with four points has tied a career high. Under a minute to go. A game that's eerily similar to Sunday when Wichita State beat USF 95-57. We're just a couple of points away from that both ways. Shockers will win their sixth in a row. Four in a row to start their new conference hall in the American. Barney, a new career high. How about that? A little right-handed flip. That was some high-level post play right there. Out of Mays South High School, just outside of Wichita, Brett Barney. Looks like 95 will be the final number for the Shockers. Sixth game this season of 90 or more. Greg Marshall said these are the sorts of games you have to win for your RPI for analytics at the end. His team is used to those must-win games. They were focused tonight. Big win for Wichita State. 35 the spread here at East Carolina. Fifth-ranked Shockers get the win. Utah and UCLA to follow us out west. Before that, though, we'll send it to the studio. For Chris Vitola, I'm Kevin Brown. So long from Greenville. Off to Bristol.